first of all, thank you everyone for being here this afternoon um, so that we can get this important message out uh, to our families and our entire community. Thank you to all of our incredible uh, law enforcement partners and our safety and security team who are working diligently to keep our students and our entire community safe on a daily basis. Um, so we're here today because there have been uh, threats on social media spreading nationwide, spreading in our state and spreading in our schools. And so many rumors have made their way into our schools and we saw that overnight last night and all into the morning. And uh, this type, these types of social media spreading of threats can, can honestly continue. And so um, we wanted to have this press conference to let everyone, our families know and our community know what, what, um, uh, what actions are being taken right now. And so what we need you to know, currently in our school district, there are no active threats toward um, any of our schools or students that are no imminent threats at this moment. And so we do know that. A lot of parents have been reaching out, are we safe to send our children to school? And that is what we can say. There are no active imminent threats to any of our schools or students in the moment. Um, what, we, what our commitment to family, our commitment to families is that every single threat that comes in, whether that is sent directly to law enforcement, or that is sent directly to the district, or it's posted on uh, Say Something app, where it's reported to a school official, every single one of those is investigated. Um, every tip, all of it, investigated to the fullest. Um, I want our families to know that they will know from our school system when an incident happens um, as quickly as we have accurate information to share. And so when we send messages to our families, um, if, if a weapon is ever found on campus, we send that message. If it, and really a firearm, we send that message to BB gun. We send those messages to our families. And so we are communicating when we have an answer to communicate. And that will happen if daily, if necessary. It happens when it's necessary. Um, we're doing thing, everything in our power um, to keep our students and our staff safe on a daily basis. And I know earlier this week, we shared all the safety and security measures. We also, in our middle and high schools, have our law enforcement partners in our schools every day. And so, again, we're doing everything in our power to keep our students safe through all of our measures, our security and safety measures. Um, also, I know that there have been a lot of discussion about um, weapon, uh, weapon detection systems. And so, right now, as of last school year, we, we do have metal detectors in every school. Um, and that those have been used at, in, a, in a random way. We've, we've ramped up that, that randomness this year and actually are also um, uh, doing detection within hallways and classrooms of students. And so that has been beefed up this year, but we have been piloting a system called OpenGate that we have seen success with. It is about 90% more effective and efficient due to the technology. Um, and our schools that are using it, right now it's Parkland High School and um, uh, Glenn High School. Students are getting in quickly and it's an, it's an accurate system. We are seeing success with that system. And so we are very much interested in um, finding the funds to do that. We are taking to our next Board of Education meeting all the details um, that would be necessary before we launch, uh, launch into our community to, to find those funds. Earlier today, I shared this information also with our county commissioners, um, but we do believe uh, metal detection is, or weapon detection is another layer of security. It takes all different measures to keep students safe. It takes the investigation of all of these, uh, all of the threats, it takes your weapon detection, it takes your camera systems, it takes your say something, it takes all of these things, it takes adults keeping their eyes on children, it takes all of our mental health supports. It is a, it is a multi-layered system that is gonna keep our, our students in our schools as safe as possible. Here's what we need from you, and this is another part of this, um, and that is to our kids, continue if you hear something that you need to tell a trusted adult, call law enforcement, um, go to the Say Something app or the Bully Patrol app, post those. What we don't, call in your concerns, post your concerns on those sites. What we do not want our children to do is repost threats. And that is happening a lot right now. That is, there's folks who are on social media reposting threats. Same with our families, parents. Um, we need to really use the avenues we have to let our 
our law enforcement and our school district know about threats so they can be investigated um, appropriately and, and, and to the fullest. And so the reposting of threats um, is actually creating more disturbance and it's actually not a joke. And neither is creating a threat out of the blue or calling in a threat that you're going to do something. That None of that is a joking matter. And I think that gone is the day that children can say, oh, I was just joking. It is not a joking matter. We are, we are it creates um, panic and it creates fear in our schools and it's a major disruption. And I mean, we, we have families on a daily basis asking if their children are safe in schools. And a lot of that is this reposting of threats. Um, and many that have not even been investigated yet because someone hears something they posted and then people are just posting it as if that is actually uh, uh, an imminent threat and so we need to allow our law enforcement partners and our security team to investigate every threat that is what they're doing now and we need for our students and families to please um, keep this in mind again gone is a day that any of this is a joking matter it is not a joking matter and we will not treat it as such within our school district so I want our students to know that um, it, it is we are not um, going to tolerate this kind of behavior that is creating disruption within our schools. Um, and so that's what we need. I, this is an all-in community-wide effort and response. We all want our community safe. Our community includes all of our schools. Um, for me, our students should walk in our schools every day and feeling that they are completely safe and when their parents drop them off or put them on the bus, they should feel that. We owe it to them to feel that and we will do everything in our power to make that happen every day. We can't do that without this incredible group behind me. And so with that, I'm going to bring up Assistant Chief um, Katie Allen from the Winston-Salem Police Department. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Katie Allen and I serve as the Assistant Chief for the Winston-Salem Police Department. I'm currently over the Field Services Bureau and the Special Operations Division. As a parent of elementary school age children myself, I fully recognize and understand the fear and uncertainty that parents feel when social media posts that threaten violence at our schools circulate on the internet. I have the unique advantage of knowing all the work that is being done by law enforcement and our school system to investigate, validate, protect, and secure our schools. As a police officer, and more importantly, as a mother, I have the utmost confidence that our school system security personnel, teachers, and administrators, our Forsyth County Sheriff's Office SROs, our Kernsville Police Department, and the officers that work at the Winston-Salem Police Department will do everything in their power to keep our children safe. The Winston-Salem Police Department has been working in partnership with the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, the Kernersville Police Department, and the Winston-Salem Forsyth County School System to investigate the social media posts that have been circulating on various social media platforms. The Winston-Salem Police Department's FBI Task Force Officer has also been involved in the investigation. Our partnerships on the city, county, state, and federal levels provide us with additional resources and investigative tools so that we may fully validate and investigate threats and posts made on social media. I want to stress the importance of see something, say something, and in this case, read something, say something, Rather than share social media posts, contact local law enforcement. We will then take immediate action to determine the source of the threat. We will stay in communication with the school system to inform them on the status of the investigation so that they can make informed decisions about what steps are necessary to keep the school safe. Rest assured, we are dedicated to protecting the students in our city and our county. We want the parents to know that we take every threat very seriously. That being said, I'm going to turn it over to my literal partner in crime, Chief Deputy Henry Gray. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chief Deputy Henry Gray with the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office. Please know that as an agency, the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office has always took the stand that we would, our stance on investigating any threat, credible or not, to its fullest. Just as the men and women that stand behind me, we are committed for fostering a safe learning environment for the students, teacher, faculties, and staff. We are invested in our children. We are here for the children. We are all in this together. So thank you for this opportunity. So at this time, we are going to open up to questions and you can ask any questions of me, my team, or our partners, our law enforcement partners. 
Yes. Did, did the uptick in threats, did it seem to happen after the incident in Georgia? I'm going to ask a couple questions here. Did it accelerate maybe overnight? And have you seen um, an increase in absences of students over yeah. the last couple of days? Yeah, so I will say in, in talking to our Chief of Safety and Security Emergency Management this morning, whenever, and, and our law enforcement partners will, could probably answer this better than I can, um, but, but he, Jonathan felt that you know when there has been a shooting anywhere in the country that there is always following that an uptick. There's always following that more threats. Um, I think that is true. We've seen that um, here as well following other incidents that have happened across the country. Um, as far as um, Monday last night and, and what's causing that, I'm not 100% sure of what that is. I do know that yesterday something went out that was from our Department of Education with a lot of schools' names on it, and that has been reposted. And so that, I think, also caused a lot of uh, a fear last night overnight and into this morning. There were many schools listed on this, on this uh, threat. Um, what I will say about attendance, I do know that yesterday you know, we were tracking attendance in a specific school and um, there were students out at one of our schools that we've been working with around an incident. I don't know the attendance today. I, I need to get those numbers today to see what the threats of yesterday, overnight, um, how they might have impacted today, but I will get that information. I am not sure about our attendance right now. Dr. Stokes, do you know by chance? No? Okay, we're gonna check. Maybe before we're done here, we, we can report that. Does anybody wanna say anything about that as well, um, the social media threats, we've confirmed. Okay. Yes. What are you doing right now to address the concerns that, the, that parents are having um, about the schools and the district wide code of conduct mm -hmm. um, and then things that are maybe considered lower, lower discipline levels like suspensions um, in, in response to threats or empty threats that they made? Yeah. I think my, my biggest message about our code is that it is similar to any code of conduct around the country, meaning there is a, uh, uh, on the consequence matrix part, meaning you do this, these are options of what can happen. Um, and there is a range, and there's a range because every situation is different. Um, a kindergartner saying something to a friend um, is very different than, or saying something about how they're gonna hurt their friend or something, is very different than an 11th grader that has had uh, shows online a social media post with a gun in the background. I mean, you're going to treat those things differently. And so there's a range. And our administrators have the ability to aggravate up or mitigate down because of the factors known. And so that is very important. But the other part of the code that is so important in this that is different than a just traditional code of conduct with here's the consequence, here's the behavior, is that there are a lot of interventions that have to be put in place so that we can prevent these, these behaviors from happening in the first place. Uh, there is a reason for every behavior and getting to the root of it and figuring out what else needs to be done to get children on track um, and, and to prevent these behaviors from occurring is just as important in our code. And so that is really a huge focus for us this year. It is not just about the behavior matrix or the consequence matrix, it is about also making sure we intervene. And I'll, I'll just say, give this example, for a child that, that might um, make a threat. I mean, an entire threat assessment process is done at the school site with the administration, student services, with our law enforcement, which is a, a new part this year that they're part of that team. And to be honest with you, there are so many things that can occur after that from uh, uh, a safety plan. And safety plans are put in place and, um, and some students are very much closely monitored and tracked because of safety plans put in place. So there are many layers. It is not just a cut and dry, um, uh, suspend or send to another location because again every situation is different. I will say that making threats um, of any kind of mass destruction, violence to a school, that is extremely that is extremely serious and will be treated as such. And so again, um, it, the code on paper is here's a major a consequence matrix, but it is so much more than that. And if we're going to change the trajectory of in the future. Uh, we have got to address all of those interventions that are uh, that are going to need to be very specific in order to prevent some of these behaviors from happening. Based on, um, are, like, did you use more metal detectors uh, today or 
yesterday uh, based on this? We did. Okay. We did. And any other uh, increase in um, security that you might, might have done? Yeah, so what I will say is, and we are so fortunate to have incredible partners standing behind me, and I'm not just saying that, it is, it is the truth um, when I think about the partnership, which partnership we have with um, the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office, Winston-Salem Police, and Kernersville Police. Um, so what I will say is, we always heighten, uh, uh, elevate security after any kind of threat, and, and that is honestly a, a joint decision between our safety team and our law enforcement partners. Um, yes, there was, uh, there was more metal detecting today in many of our schools um, that had, the, had threats, and, um, and many times more law enforcement is sent to the school. And so it really is about, again, analyzing each situation, but the response is quick, and we immediately, like if it happens overnight, I mean that there's a message going out to the principal immediately, and if it happens overnight in the morning, there's a message that goes out to families as well. So it is a joint effort, and um, again, I think it shows how serious every single threat is taken. Are you hoping to get, have open gate at all the middle and high schools? Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So that sounds like that's starting to pick up steam yes. as far as. Yes, and again, our, our, um, at our next board meeting, there, the board did ask this past week for very specific information also about the, the sustainability of that, uh, of that resource and what that will look like in the future so they know what to expect. But at the end of the day, um, our board is also on board with keeping all students safe. And I think, you know, times have changed. And I think that we need to make sure that if there is anything more we can do, that we are doing it. I wanted to ask you just some like solace uh, to parents, I know hearing about the different agencies involved and then mentioning the FBI, uh, but then saying that there is no imminent threat to schools right now. Um, just when parents are hearing this, uh, some solace to them, but also for them to understand that it sounds like you guys are doing everything you can just to make sure that everything is okay, uh, but there's nothing happening right here, right now. Is that correct? To say? That is exactly correct. You just said that perfectly. Um, we are doing everything we can. There is not an imminent threat immediately right in right now in our schools. Um, but again, if a threat were to come in in five minutes, it would be right immediately uh, the investigation would begin. Dr. McManus, how big of a disruption to education is all of this? Huge. And I think, I think that's the issue, you know, our schools, you know, we send children to school to learn so that they can be successful and future ready. And so all of this is a disruption. Um, it, it really is. I mean, we've always, since the beginning of time, done things to keep kids safe in schools. But the, the threats and the social media as a platform to spread threats um, is very disruptive to schools. And it does create more fear. Um, than I have seen in my 35 years. Um, it's that reposting on social media and, and all that sharing, and it has created a, a higher level of fear for parents, absolutely, which then becomes disruptive. Sorry. What are you doing for parents to address concerns over transparency of safety information? Maybe they, they're hearing things or they're not getting the information they think as fast as they probably can. Yeah. I, I, I understand a parent that um, if, if something has happened with their child, um, or something has happened with a child, I understand the, you want to know what's happening to that child, like what's going to happen. And, and that, is a, that is a natural thing. I've, I, when I was a principal, parents would say, well, what are you doing about so-and-so? You know, there are laws that protect um, children, uh, FERPA laws, and so we cannot, I understand that can't, might sound frustrating at times, but we cannot share specific information about a child. And a lot of times, when there is an active investigation and we say we can't share specifics because it is an active investigation, that is because it's an active investigation. And our law enforcement, I mean, I've heard that before from law enforcement. It, it, it is, we are, we are communicating as quickly and as much information as possible so that our parents know what is happening. Um, and sometimes someone will say, well, that was vague. We are communicating what we can. But I do want our families to know if there was an imminent danger or threat on a campus and we are aware of it, we would give that information, we would do something different that day, they would know it. Anybody else? Um, yeah, I have more. Um, is there anything being done with principals, school resource officers, teachers um, to address things like this? Um, is it getting addressed on a daily basis when there's a threat within the school? Um, so that students know not to panic or parents would hear from students not to panic. 
Absolutely. I mean, just this week, we sent in a team from our student services to work with students across one of our schools. Um, we met with parents to try to give them as much information as we could. That next day, was at, we're at, with, our team was at the school meeting with kids to make sure they have a place where they can share any concerns they have. That is a, a normal process that we go through. As far as working with our building leaders, yes, there is regular expectation setting. I do know that um, Captain Ammons, who oversees our SROs, he and our chief of safety and security meet regularly. This team now has a standing meeting regularly to discuss our, what messages do we need to get out to our schools. Um, anytime we analyze and say we need to do something different, that messaging and training goes out to our building leaders. Um, there was a, a change we just made with interior doors and locking of them, and that has gone out um, to our schools. And as people say, well, what about this? And what about this? And have you thought about this? Our team goes in to analyze and assess, but we are changing anytime that we see that there is something that we can do different. Um, we are we are analyzing it and putting it into motion. And when you when you take that approach, um, you are continuously having to train your leaders and your people. Um, our folks come together um, for training. And so I don't know, Captain Ames, is there anything else you'd want to add about SROs? And as you all find any anything else? No. Or okay, okay. I will just say this: they work together in partnership. Our, our communication lines between our SROs and our principal, it's continuous, just like it is between Captain Ammons and our team. Um, it's continuous. And so yes, ongoing training. We do tabletop exercises. We have to, our schools have to do drills for all of the things that we say that all of these kind of incidents we do drills for so that um, it becomes natural and you're not in the moment um, having to worry. You know what to do. And so it's a continuous improvement model. And for instances where maybe a student um, specifically threats to schools or students from students, you mentioned there's tracking or, or some looking at the disciplinary record. Absolutely. What does that look like going forward? Um, not referencing any specific case, but in mm -hmm. terms of ensuring that nothing happens again yeah. in the future with that student. Yeah, I will, I will just say that the, the threat assessment process is a very extensive process. And from what I understand, and tell me if I'm wrong, it's modeled after the FBI, the FBI's threat assessment process. And so all of the information within the threat assessment process is captured, but it is, it's extensive. Um, and so it takes a little bit of time because of how extensive it is. And so it just depends on what is uncovered through that process about what the next steps are with an individual child or a group of children. And it, again, it's, it's, it's very, specific based on what is uncovered by that team um, that is going through that process and that investigation. And then lastly, um, what are these secure entry arrivals and uh, kind of looking like in terms of employing volunteers or community members to yeah. help with that? Well, I will tell you, I've had, we've had parents reach out to, to me and to specific principals saying that if you need help, um, that we will be happy to come in and help in the morning. And again, with our current system, which is uh, more of a metal detection system that is, it takes longer, and you have to actually search every single book bag. It's, it's not as new of a technology, am I saying that right, Brent, um, as the open gate. And so it's a very different process, and so it's very time consuming. Uh, you need more staff. And so there have been parents that have said they would help, and I know that this morning at one of our schools, I know that um, there were parents there as part of the process. Um, I think the value of that as well is the more our parents can be in our schools, the more they will feel safe about what is happening in our schools. And so um, I spoke to a mom this morning that was in one of our schools and, and she said that process went well. So again, I, my goal is that teachers can be in their classrooms receiving students when they get there so they can begin that instructional day so they can continue to build those relationships and get kids into their classrooms, not being out metal detecting, and so all the help we can get until we move to a system, the next system that is uh, more efficient and takes less adults at those stations, um, we are open to all volunteers. Well, all approved volunteers. One more over here. I have one last one, kind of piggybacking off of that. Um, in regards to the open gate system, I know uh, it was actually the thing that you guys had at Glen uh, High School, and then to my understanding it's also at Parkland. I wanted to ask if you guys are switching it up around in other high schools or middle schools, or is it kind of just staying there if you're able to share that? Yeah, no, I can share that. They're, they're the, the, the plan for this, and 
it was, is to move them. It's like four weeks of, assess, of, of using and then move to this next school because we've got different types of schools and so we want to use it in different schools. The way the campuses are designed are very different from you know, a, a Parkland to a West Forsyth. And so we are, we are, or to a Reagan, I mean, all of our campuses are designed differently. And so we are working to spread them around. Um, it, that, that, that's a really good question because I'm like, I don't want to move them, so we need more. Um, and so basically, uh, but that is the plan. So we can really pilot across the district and have our schools also learn how to use them because we did do a training with all principals, but you're going to have to, now you get the system, we're going to have to train them on the on the spot again. And so the more we use it, the more ready people will be to use the system. Anything else? All right. You guys